What are we doing? I don't know. What are you doing? What are we doing right now? We're about to record a <laughs> podcast, Steve. <laughs> this is going to be the one. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve, and this is 60 Cycle Home, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. Hey, Steve. What's up, Ryan? Have you seen all these brand new PRS pedals? I have. You have? What do you think I, about it? I watched some of the video. You watched uh, some of it? I didn't it? watch all of it because I was driving to work. Well, I made a super cut of some of my favorite moments mm -hmm. of the video that Paul Reed Smith himself did talking about the pedals and we'll watch it here together and then you and i will discuss Do you want to plug it in this uh this pedal launch and what we think about it afterwards here i think this is going to really give us plenty to talk about though it's a couple minutes long but it's worth it stick around guys here we go we're getting in the pedal business three pedals these are professional pieces of audio gear so we're in the pedal business and here we go there's a sound that happens during a storm with the wind going through the trees and it always reminded me of flangers so that's where the name came from two flangers in here one two See, the name is they're great. gonna fight it each is. other they're it's gonna play name. with each other and it's just good fun now for me uh there's so many sounds in here. This is a professional piece of audio gear. I showed this to a rock star once. He says, that's not a pedal. That's how good this is. Well, that's a professional piece of audio gear. And um, I, this is going to be so much fun to use in this studio. Don't touch my pedal. That's the whole idea. We want the pedal to make the pedal board and not be taken off. This, we want this one to make the pedal board and stay. You can't even hear them on. When we got the first prototype, we weren't even sure it was on. That really helps to have a feedback loop between your eyes. In a blindfold test, I wouldn't even know it was on. I had a bunch of mine, use any of them. I didn't like them. Turn the compressor off and use the output knob as a boost pedal. And if I turn it up a little more, oh no. Like, oh my God, it's a boost pedal. It's just good fun. This is horse meat. And I love I'll tell a meat. story about it. It's an excellent In the name. container in, in front of the where the strings are, you know, in the was a Klon Centaur. And I, I was like, what's the big deal? And I plugged into this thing and it sounded really good. Ah, uh, that's what the big deal is. I like this thing. And there were things about it that I wanted to change. And I worked on a circuit from scratch not looking at that circuit but what did we want this thing to do while i was really impressed with the clon i wanted the pedal to do things that i wasn't getting out of it and so the joke became well it was horse meat um <laughs> it ate clon centaurs for breakfast from scratch completely from scratch design that original pedal changed our industry in a good way. I mean, they're, they're holy grails, really. Tim Pierce stepped on the, the horse meat and everybody started screaming. I think that was the day we decided to go into the pedal business when he stepped on that horse meat. It's not a clone. It's from scratch. I think it's really cool. There are holy grails in our industry. Anyway, horse meat. I was plugged into a tuner pedal, which is a buffer. Look, in my world, I see people buy pedals, but there's only eight, nine pedals or seven pedals or 10 pedals on their board. And there's 200 at home or 100 at home or 50 at home, something like that. I want these to be good enough that they make the pedal board and they stay. I like that we've given them names that are fun. I like that they work. I like that I want to use them in the studio. I like that they're good pieces of uh, guitar gear. Look, PRS likes making really good pieces of gear that people can use. So we're in the pedal business, and here we go. Give it a try. I'm happy about it. I think it's <laughs> really cool. This studio had a lot to do with us getting into the pedal business, but they were intended to be used live. Use them in your band, you know. Whoa, 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 whoa.
It should be fun. You should enjoy hitting the button. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit longer than it probably needed to be, but I got a huge kick out minutes. of it. <laughs> I feel like my hot take is that this launch was really weird. Did it feel weird to you? Uh, Well, when you super cut it like that. It well, does. not just that. I'm not talking about this video. I'm talking about the launch itself. Like PRS for the first time ever is launching pedals. Mm -hmm. Like, they just barely got into the amp game a few years ago. Right. You know, apparently the amps are supposed to be pretty good. I haven't tried one. I heard I, but, I heard on the effects loop they were talking about the amps, and they said the biggest problem with the amps is that they don't have great distribution. So, Like, where can you try one? You like, know? though I've seen them in, I'm pretty sure I've seen them in Guitar Center. Okay. Um, but, yeah, they said that, like, it's like sometimes Guitar Center has it, sometimes they don't. And then sometimes a place, like, they've gone places where, like, they'll have a PRS amp. And it'll be used and it'll be like dirt cheap because no one, no one knows, knows how much it's supposed to be. Right, right. But like they're just finally getting into pedals. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost like positive. I've heard like interviews with Paul where he said in the past that he doesn't like or use pedals. <laughs> so that side of it is a little bit weird to me. Like maybe I've misremember that. But then like, Starting a pedal line, your first forte into pedal manufacturing, a really honestly like pretty bold and cool, I yeah. think, flanger. Like mm -hmm. it's got a lot going on. Like it's not just it's not just like, oh, let's put out, you know, like a standard flanger and here's our flanger. It's like, no, they they they're giving you a lot to work with there. Are there that many people who want to get intense into a flanger pedal though and have a flanger right. that takes up it's big. It looks like it takes up like three normal pedal spaces or something like that. Like I, that's how I, much space I, I would dedicate to a spring reverb. I heard that if you watched other videos, it all of those are like they look a lot smaller compared to like other pedals. Oh, okay. So it makes like, more sense when you see them side by yeah, side. Yeah, like something. I don't think they're full. I think the the flanger might be uh, the full fifteen ninety box. It's a big boy. Um, you think it's that small? No. No, I don't think so either. But then... But I'm not sure. I don't think it's a lot bigger than that. You've got the flanger, which has got a lot going on. Then you have a two-knob compressor, which is like, all, all right, there are so many compressor pedals on the market that give but you Ryan, so much more control. Optical. But there's a ton of optical compressors on the market. I just demoed a Walrus compressor that's oh, optical. Oh, yeah, the Mira. The Mira. It's, it's incredibly common. But is it based on an LA-2A? I don't know. I bet a bunch of pedals are based on LA two A's. Uh but you know, it is what it is. Like I'm really I'm really baffled by the knob placement on the mm -hmm. compressor because the compressor knob itself is what, like an inch, an inch and a half away from the foot switch. Yeah, I, the the spot that the that lower knob is at feels like that should be the spot where the LED would be. Well, there is an LED there. I know. The L <laughs> well, there's an LED above it. <laughs> there's two LEDs on it. Yeah. Like, I, a... You know, I cut up the video a lot. Paul spent a lot of time talking about how there's two LEDs on the <laughs> Oh, okay. Because <laughs> one of them pulses with the compression. Right. And it's like, that is, a, it, it's always funny to me, the difference between manufacturer videos mm -hmm. for products versus like third party demos, like what, what I do. Right. Or like. You know, like I didn't spend any time talking about the LED indicator flashing on the walrus compressor that I got because mm -hmm. that's a pretty standard feature. But when you're the manufacturer, it's like, can you believe it? Mm -hmm. The light flashes with your playing, guys. It's incredible. Like a manufacturer is going to like lean into every feature like it's revolutionary. Right. Uh, where third-party demo channels are more like, let's get to... The thing that makes this different, or yeah. let's get into let's you know, turn it off. the features that matter. Let's turn it off. And then there's an overdrive pedal, a distortion pedal, whatever you want to call it. That he he really strongly hints like this is clonish, but it also that it's an original circuit. But it's a completely original circuit. But also, wink, wink, wink. It's it's clonish. Like, but also it's horse meat. It's that's the, do you get the joke, Steve? I love that name. No, but like every play, like I, I still think if I love the name too. 
I think it's a cool. I think, I think it's a really fun. I think funny the name. biggest problem with the name is that it's a PRS. Yeah, and like you think of PRS, you don't think of like a name like that uh, that implies like a level of violence towards animals. Well, it could imply a bunch of different things. It could either imply like, yeah, this is the meat of the horse. We ground up a horse. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if there, it was like an old like saying or something for something that's been reworked mm. a bunch of times into becoming its own thing. The other side of it, and I've seen, you know, the pockets of the internet where I like to hang out where the trolls live. Apply a bit of a sexual connotation to it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's terrible. I, I, but like I get sin I get a sincere wave of joy rushing through my body when I watch that clip of Paul talking about it, and I can tell that he thinks the name is hilarious. And mm. I think the name is hilarious too, and I love that he loves it. I I think it's just supposed to be like a centaur reference. And centaur is half man, half horse. Right. So it's like just like oh, we're turning the horse. We're like grinding up that centaur. Right. This is what comes out. Um, but the thing that um, I, I, is the it, thing that people keep saying is like oh, horse meat. Like oh yeah, it's that means it's mediocre. Just like spell. I'm like I don't know, guys. I heard that Jack in a Box's best era was the horse meat era. No, it was so, the kangaroo era. Oh, was it was it Taco Bell who was doing horse meat? I don't know. I there think that like might some, have been urban legend, but can, like some, Jack in the Box was, was definitely, definitely doing kangaroo meat. Wasn't it kangaroo meat from Canada too? It's like oh, really weird. Weird. That is weird. Yeah. I learned the other day that someone released a pack of kangaroos near Yellowstone. That sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah, super bad idea. It's like a game hunting thing or something oh like my that. Gosh. Why are we doing that? Like, I guess, like, it's a turducken thing where you could shove a pheasant inside of a kangaroo what? and then shoot it. <laughs> if you put a big enough, if you put, a like, a can of goose in, in the front of a kangaroo, then it can just be, like, jumping along. And right. as soon as it, like, senses you, then the can of goose will fly. Like, and you'll have a flying can of kangaroo. Right. Kanga goose. Kanga goose. So, I... Okay, but those three pedals, backtracking a little yeah. bit here. A Mary Cries, kind of a bad name. I think that's a bad name. I don't like that. Went one. through the trees is a fine. I name. realize Mary Cries is a is a I think it's supposed to be a Hendrix reference. But he didn't really did he ever use a compressor? Not a pedal. Uh, I don't know. J- Jimi Hendrix would never use guitar pedals at all. Ever. He was a purist. Did, com- did compressor pedals exist when he was playing? Jimi Hendrix definitely would never no, like. He, would he have. never used a Strymon or a Line Six. He would have. That, that's not the conversation I'm trying to have. <laughs> here's what here's what I'm saying. Like, for a company's first oh. launch into pedals, a flanger, a comp- and a compressor are kind of weird for it being in the first three. Like the drive, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get I the drive. Comp- I think a compressor is like. Uh, you, let's do something different. But normally, yeah, you'd think drive something heavy, like a distortion or a fuzz, and then like you know what I think? a bass, like a delay, like a standard modulator or timer. Yeah, I think beep, beep, beep. I think drive, fuzz, and then some sort of time based. Yeah. Uh, you know what? They could have they could have done drive and fuzz. Flanger is time based, Ryan. I know, and done. Uh, they could have done the flanger still because it's cool. But I think the compressor is a little bit baffling to me. What mm. they should have done, though, they should have done a fuzz. And then they should have combined the horse meat and the compressor into a two-in-one. So that you've got that Quan style. It, to be fair, like listening to the sound samples, it doesn't sound like fully a clone. Like it's in that direction, right. but it sounds gainier. It sounds more sculpted uh, with EQ in a different way than a clone usually does. Cause a clone is kind of like, I kind of think of them as blunt instruments in a way. And it's, mm. it did, it honestly does sound like a fun pedal. The drive does sound fun to me. Um, but yeah, combining those two into one pedal in the same box as the flanger, I think would have made a lot of sense. Right. It would have filled, it would have, it would have, there are two things that I think would work r- really well with each other. And maybe you could change the order like one before the other. Then you're really just adding two knobs with the compressor. I think that makes sense. How did you, uh, how did you feel about the aesthetic choices? I'm and- fine with it. I, I saw some people complaining about the way they look. I'm fine with it. 
I I just felt like they could have been. I mean, they don't excite me. More interesting. But then, like, for PRS, what are they gonna do? I don't know. Any, I just feel like anything could have been better. They're just kind of flat. They actually remind me a lot of New Neighbor. They do remind me of New Neighbor um, a lot. Um, yeah. You know, it's kind of this generic, the very fine. I, when New Neighbor, line work when New Neighbor first box. did it, I thought New Neighbor was, was interesting when they did it, but now it, it's uh, it's been done. Yeah, you know what? It's yeah. been done. So, but it's kind of like that. But it's hard to it's hard to do something new in the oh, pedal space. But I'm trying to think of what PRS could have done to set themselves apart as far as a pedal goes. Just they all should have just had been covered in different color seagulls. Seagulls or eagles? What are on the PRS? I I, th- I don't. I think they're different types of birds. I have my birds covered up, Steve. Oh, on right. the PRS, Shoot. they're you know they're like hawks or something like that. Um, what would have been interesting is if they had done like a a little panel of quilt quilted maple. Maybe not even like a full panel, but maybe like a little piece that the that it's the, like a uh, veneer, a veneer under clear, a veneer under clear. But like a little, oh. a little piece that like it's that holds the place of like a washer for the foot pedal or something like that. That could have been really interesting. Or on the back where the the jacks plug in, there's like a, a maple. No, no, that could work. So um, this is going to tie into. It would have been. It would have added real cost to it. You know, and it's uh, not like they're cheap pedals to start with, and they're not. They're not crazy expensive either, and they are selling. Do you know how I know they're selling? Are they selling? I know that they're selling because people have bought them through my affiliate links, even though I didn't do any videos of them. Like people clicked my affiliate links and then bought them through various different retailers. And like the day after and the, and the next day, like I saw probably like four or five of those PRS pedals sell through my links. So thank you people who bought them. Let us know how they are. If you're a viewer, let us know how, how they are and how you like them. I'm sure you have them by now. It's been like three weeks. <laughs> They should have done something. Oh, that's a. Oh, that could work too. Uh, they should have done something like this, uh, and just had a little piece in there. Oh, so, I see. So this is. Uh, you made me think of this because we were talking about <sighs> baseball cards the other night. Isn't that been cool? And this this is a thing in like newer baseball cards where they probably started in like the mid late nineties, where they would take a piece of memorabilia like a cut You're out of a jersey. You're gonna have to send me that photo so I can put it yeah, up here. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> a, look. There you a go. Baseball card with a piece of wood in it. Um, but yeah, they could have done something like that. Like you know, it would have been really cool. And it would. You know, this is just an extra cost idea. Like it would would have cost them real money to do this with every pedal. But instead of an LED, mm-hmm. have a little window, or maybe alongside an LED, have a little window, and inside there's a little piece of quilted maple and a light that shines on it. So you pick up that shimmer of the wood and you're seeing a little piece of, you know, this is just getting in there. more and more complicated. Yeah. It's, it's more complicated than it needs to be for sure. <laughs> or, you know, maybe like birds, uh, laser etched into the tops and the knobs. Oh, that'd be cool. Birds That's as, nice as knob markers, you know, that would be cool. Yeah, I think there's things that they could have done to make it set apart. It, it's right now. It's a little, it's a little standard. It's a little generic. Um, and it's a little too simple. I almost, th- the thing is, is it's almost one of those things where I feel like they could have just gone with like just a solid all across like mid tone, mid dark tone gray. Yeah. With a pro like with the right kind of like text on it and not even had a graphic. I think, you know, I'm totally, I'm totally fine with what they did. I think it totally works, but Disagree. like here's, there's all sorts of different styles of art for pedals out there. There's the kind of like indie punk zine kind of look like hand screen printed, like, you know, whatever goes, you know, like, you know, whatever you want to do for the graphics, go crazy, yeah. make yeah. it obscene. If you want, there's that whole side. There's like the industrial design side, which is like your bosses and like your mm-hmm. DODs and stuff like that. It's like, here is a, manufactured product that serves a purpose this could be a foot switch for a forklift for all we know sort of thing (laughs) and then there's like the kind of like arty clean lines like tech bro side of like pedal design and i think these kind of hit that tech bro kind of like oh we want this to look kind of like you know minimalist furniture sort of thing. oh no okay i got it this is what they should have done 
they've already got it. They should have just printed their like the PRS guitars logo uh-huh. over the entire face of it. It'd give it that like white pedal and it just says PRS silk screen across the top. Um and just give it like some big like streetwear vibes. <laughs> I feel like that would have big streetwear vibes. Or you know like would have been fun like PRS cr- at cr- X Supreme. The PRS logo is Paul's signature. What if it like each pedal was just the the text for it was his was his handwriting, like fuzz mm. written out in, in Paul's well, except handwriting. Except there's not a fuzz pedal. So. But like, let's talk. I want to talk some more about kind of the weirdness of that video from Paul and kind of the weird well, vibes weird that I got because you cut it up. I know, but before I cut it up, it had like a weird <laughs> vibe. Like he kept trying to mention like. And like imply like these aren't just lowly pedals. These are studio appropriate. Like, is that weird? Like, is that a weird stance to take? Is that like, it almost feels kind of insulting to all other pedals where it's like, Hmm. oh, you know, pedals, they're not really for the studio. If you know what I mean, these pedals are for the studio. Like, like a manufacturer has to like push their product and have to like have their own idea of why their product is superior. But that feels weird to me. It's yeah. a weird way to enter the pedal market. No, but, I can. I think that makes sense, like with the compressor, because the compressor is based on a studio compressor, right? Um, but certain, yeah, for the other and ones, there's, it, there's, it does seem a little like. Well, you know, people are using all sorts of. You know, the JHS color box is designed to be a studio effect. Like you can. That's the primary like right. idea. If you have it in your head though that pedals aren't studio tools across mm-hmm. the board like not appropriate for use in studio. Like I was kind of getting that vibe, like, uh, you know, like pedals are not really for the studio, but these ones are sort of thing. Like I don't really understand where that's coming from, but also we want this on your board and it's never going to come. Right. Well, that's also an interesting thing to talk about. Like, I think that's, I almost, I admire that goal and I don't Mm. think I've ever heard a pedal manufacturer vocalize that before of like our goal is to be the pedal that you stop with. Like you're not going to replace this. This is going to be the pedal that you have on your board forever. And it's an extremely lofty goal. It's a little bit weird though, because it kind of like makes me think that Paul doesn't understand pedal culture at all. Well, even, even within pedal culture, I think there are certain pedals that like, just don't leave your board. Sure. You know, like the tuner. He should have come out with a tuner. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's there's plenty, there's lots of people out there who they change everything on their board all the time, but they still have their like, yeah, you know, 1989 Proco Rat Two. Sure, sure. And the you know they never pull that thing off, or it's like, oh, I finally f- feel like I got to pull this thing off because it's getting a little too beat up. And I uh, man, it's it's uh, everything else I've tried like is. 90, like 90% of the way there, but it feels like such a downgrade. It's, like there's pedals, right. there's pedals out, you know, that's how I, people talk about the King of Tone that way. People talk about the Timmy that way. Yeah. That, I mean, that's how know. I feel about, you know, the, the, my 50, 50 drive and things yeah. like that. You know, there's certain pedals that yeah. very, that's, very the, rarely get swapped the, off my board. The 50, 50 could be a pedal that could be a daily driver for a forever pedal on people's boards if only there were more in circulation i know (laughs) i'm working towards the goal of having more time to get stuff like that done i I had my thing that i talked about last week or the week before is like i'm trying to decrease how much work that i'm going to be doing that's something that you could do if you had less work if i had more time then i would be able to you know tackle that sort of thing i still might push it on her i slow rolled to my kid hey have you ever designed a guitar pedal (laughs) she was like what i'm like if I send you, I want to be the one to do the art. I was Steve. like, if I sent you some uh, some design specifications, could you design a, an ice cream themed guitar pedal? Tell her to make a shirt of us. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her to make a shirt design, and we'll put it up on the uh, on Teespring on Teespring or whatever. What are, yeah. we, are we using Teespring? Yeah, we're, we're using, using Teespring. The other one. No, we're not using the other one. Threadless. I stopped using Threadless. I didn't like the user interface on it, and mm-hmm. and Teespring is linked to youtube so it's yeah. just it makes more yeah. sense to us uh you got anything else on prs pedals i just think there's some weird energy there 
I think the drive sounds uh, pretty pretty good. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind getting a chance to try it. And I'm honestly not someone who cares about clones. And it, I know it's not technically a clone because it's a, it's a complete original circuit. Mm -hmm. They didn't base it off of any previous circuits. Um, there's no possible way it's not it doesn't have the guts it doesn't have lineage with other previous sure. circuits. like there's no possible way but i believe that they didn't just take a clon and reverse engineer yeah. it's something else yeah. um they didn't, they didn't go on uh diy stunt boxes and pull the the clon right. as far as we know schematic down and then change out three resistors and say look it's a new battle yeah the the flanger looks compelling to me it looks yeah. bold yeah. It's a bold choice for I, I a think first it's battle interesting. Line. It's an interesting lineup. Time will tell uh, how they sell, how people like them. The prices uh, are on the higher side. How but much I, were they? You know, uh, I think I don't. I don't. Wasn't know. the drive like two fifty? I think so. If I'm wrong about that, I'm wrong. But I thought the drive was like two fifty. Is that which reasonable? Is like, I don't know. That's like normal boutique prices okay. these days, and it's got a bunch of knobs on there. The 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 knob to dollar, dollar ratio, per, yeah. I think it's probably fine. The flanger probably has a pretty good knob to to dollar ratio. The compressor, I maybe it's maybe there's something about it that I don't understand that makes it better than all other compressors. But I yeah. that one's is only it's, it's, it's only a head scratcher for me. With only two knobs, it does not have a very high knob to dollar no. ratio. Uh, and bad bad placement on the knobs. Like I, I'm not gonna like tiptoe around that. It's bad placement. Yeah, I think you know you kind of mentioned like product re product releases and like um you talking about that. And I think that is a thing with this one. I I thought it was really cool. I I kind of feel like it it's a testimony to the company's belief in this product that Paul did the release. Now, I don't know who else they would have had do it because I don't really follow PRS. I don't know if they would have brought someone out in to do it. But I also think that's like part of, you know, what made the whole thing uh, a little off kilter is, you know, no, everyone has a preconceived notion of who Paul is. Right. And, and uh, so no one really knew what to expect. And when at the end of the day, it's like, ah, it seems like there was probably a, a loose script you know, bullet point outline of points to hit he just, and he hit them all. And it was a little awkward. And probably if he does, if they release it over the course of the next three or four years, uh, you know, uh, three pedals, three new pedals a year. And so in four years, they've got right. 12 pedals, like probably by that fourth release, he's going to be really good at this. It just felt like a, a strange energy where like, a couple times in the video without me even editing it down to be silly. Um, He's just like, well, we're in the we're in the pedal business now, and it just he seems like weirdly deflated, you know, like I maybe I'm reading into his personality because I've seen him be excited about things like back in the day, like I was following him on Periscope, and he would he would go around and like go through piles of wood and like look at this wood, oh my gosh, look at this, and I've seen him be animated. I we like me and Blake interviewed yeah. him. Yeah. I've seen him be excited and animated and interested in what he's talking about before, and it just. It, it didn't feel like he's into this. And maybe that's me reading something that isn't there. Well, I think it's also like you're talking about Periscope. Periscope is... I know, no. Is, that was you know, it's years a ago. It's a live, but it's a live thing. Like Sure. And, and live like, is a yeah. very different energy than like a pre-record. Yeah. You know? Well, like we're in the pedal business now. That, was, that could have been the 40th time he said it that day. And he's probably just like tired of it. Here's, but it's finally the one cut where he didn't like say we're in the pub now. <laughs> so they're like, well, I guess we're going to take it. Right. He, he might have been pissed at the process of making a video, which you know, we, I completely we understand. Don't, we, don't, we don't know. Right. I'm just saying from the perspective of like making a video, we know that it's hard. Yeah. And so I want to at least give him some of the credit. I don't follow their their YouTube particularly close, so I don't know how often he is doing sure. stuff and regardless this is a new product they've never launched a pedal before yeah they're in the pedal business now they're in the they're in the pedal business so now, this I guess. Is, so it's a new thing so I, so i just you know i want to extend that that 
grace of, of this course. is a new territory and it's probably I mean, a lot of nerves. I want to make it very clear. Like I think I think the pedals sound good. I don't I don't see anything. I didn't hear anything about the pedals. Where I was like, oh no, that's too bad. Like they all sound good. They all sound fine. I mean, like sometimes you can't even tell they're on. They sound so good. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> these aren't pedals a rock star said that yeah uh, but if you want okay go okay, ahead make uh, your last point i'm uh, done a fantasy i've had in my head this Gross. is getting saucy uh a fantasy i've had in my head that like how i would have enjoyed seeing these pedals launched is because i i, I vaguely remember paul saying in interviews years past that like he doesn't really care about pedals at all i kind of wish they had brought in a new personality to be the face of PRS pedals. Mm -hmm. And like in my head, it's like a character. It's like someone playing Paul's like nephew. Who's like, Hey, I'm like Peter Ray Smith or something like that. It's still a PRS thing, but he's like, my my uncle's not really into pedals, but I love them. That's why I'm coming out with my own PRS pedal line. And my uncle helped, you know. All right, like, all right. Work with me here. Okay. Same sort of idea. I like Peter Ray Smith. It's better than the name that I had, which was just Peter Reed Smith. Okay. But, and I wasn't thinking it was going to be a younger, like a nephew. I was just thinking it would be a brother, but nephew's really good too. Yeah, I like the nephew I energy. I like the nephew energy. Uh, I like the name Peter Peter Ray Smith, but here's where it gets. I feel wild. like it's got to be like a more millennial name though, like not Peter. Like some what's? There's not a lot of P know. names. Yeah, man. there's not a lot of P names. Patrick Ray Smith. It's got to be something. Patty Ray Smith. <laughs> Look, it doesn't it matter. Would be cool. It would be cool if it was a girl. Guys at home, folks at home, yeah, men and women who watch this show. Suggest us appropriate names. For Let's start with Paul's the letter P. Paul's nephew. Yeah, it could be Paul's niece. <laughs> could be Paul's niece. Uh, uh, so anyway. Uh, what if they're twins and one's a boy and one's a girl? Yeah. Uh, but, That'd be fun. But the thing is here, and this is where I think it's uh, like if it stays male is more interesting. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It's just Paul in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> like just like a not a wig, but like a it's a, backwards baseball. So now, hat. Yeah. So now what I'm saying is it's Paul Reed Smith doing the Steve Buscemi, <laughs> "Hey, my fellow kids" meme oh to my sell gosh. these pedals. Oh my! There's the show. We don't need to do any more podcasts. That's it. <laughs> but, oh, I would have bought all three if Paul did that. I would just okay, Paul. You earned it. You earned my money. I'm gonna buy these pedals from you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, fellow kids. <laughs> Gr- Greetings, fellow guitarists. Check out my radical pedals. And there's like a clip of someone dressed like him doing skateboard tricks. <laughs> that would be sick. He's like slamming a, he's like slamming a white claw That'd or be- something. <laughs> no. Oh. Okay. He's, he's playing this nephew character. He's wearing a backwards baseball hat. He's skateboarding and he's vaping. <laughs> this is this is the character that I want to be selling. Does me anybody pedals. vape anymore? I hope, pa- Paul, I hope you watch this. I and I hope your feelings aren't hurt at any point. I hope you understand that, you know, like it, we're we're rooting for your pedal line. I hope you make yeah. a lot more. I hope they sell really, really uh, good. There, there's a there's a lot of people who I think are unfairly taking the piss out of this pedal lineup um i I, it is it is weird though right it's a weird launch it's it's a weird launch but you know it's 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 got weird energy is all when's the last time like how did i'm trying to remember how did gibson launch the maestro line kind of quietly yeah (laughs) they don't really have they don't have gibson printed on like hundred dollar pedals right right did they know they had some marketing materials for them no that that were gibson like hey here's our pedals now but it's they weren't breaking new ground. It's not the first time Gibson has made pedals. That's true. They hadn't made them in a long time, but it's not the first time. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm sure a lot of you are pissed at us now. And you know, Paul, if you're watching, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I wasn't trying to hurt your feelings. I know you can handle it. You're a tough guy, Paul. You've got a great sense of humor. I already know that about you. All right. I know, I know you made it through this just fine, Paul, and you're not mad at me at all. 
But if you are, that's fine too. If you'd like to help pay our legal fees uh, for the libel slash slander you know what? lawsuit uh, that's coming at us because of this episode, you can head on over to patreon.com for where for as little as $1 a month, you can support the oncoming uh, legal fees. You know what? If if they go after us over this no video. No one's going to go after us If over they this do, video. though. If they do. I'm going to go straight to the local like local news sleuth of the guitar YouTube world. I'm going to take it straight to KDH, and he's going to oh take care God. of it for us. Like the Turco Files. Yeah, it's local TV. <laughs> Most of you don't know what I'm talking about, but the, he's the Turco Files. <laughs> the guitar YouTube. Um, I can't believe I'm suggesting going to KDH or something. <laughs> well, a lot of people like him. He's, whatever. He had a rough start, in my opinion, but you know he, he exists. <laughs> <laughs> like now these, he's definitely going to target us like these fine folks did uh at the one dollar level uh kenneth k and at the ten dollar level which is the inner circle level shane it's just shane his name is shane he's Thanks, already shane. in the inner circle he reached out to me he actually did the he did it very quickly he he signed up he reached out to me he did it so fast that i was like why do i have a friend request from this rando Shane, because I hadn't seen the Patreon email. That's how fast he was. Yeah. That's the way you do That's it. That's really guys. quick. Uh, so head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle homecast. He was so fast, Steve didn't know what was going yeah. on. And Steve always knows out. what's going on. Uh, Ryan, I got a question for you. I'm ready to answer it. What do you think Paul Reed Smith eats for breakfast? Um, What does Paul Reed Smith eat for breakfast? Yeah, you know, I bet he, he goes a little bit spicy. I bet he goes for like chorizo and eggs. I haven't had chorizo in a long time. You should, Steve. Treat yourself. Get yourself some chorizo. We've got a guitar here sent to us by uh, Greg Straub, and it is a breakfast guitar. Custom guitar made to order. Ask Kevin for more info. <laughs> Guys, ask Kevin. Come on. Kevin knows. I wish that sign wasn't in front of you know part of the business end of this guitar here, but... I'm sure there's nothing. This uh, is an English breakfast, right? I'm seeing uh, the beans. Yeah. I'm seeing sausage, blood sausage, some sort of, I'm assuming some, ham. It's like ketchup. There is, that, is, is that ham? There yeah, is I ketchup. Guess that would be ham. There's a fried egg and that's toast, right? And then what are the round things for the knobs? How meatballs? They kind of look mushroomy, but is that a thing? I don't know. Don't British know. people, tell us what those knobs are. I think there's supposed to be a tomato. Well, there is tomato in the beans. Yeah. I think the beans, are they painted on or are they 3D? Everything looks kind of 3D. I think they're 3D. I think this I mean, thing. Some of it's definitely 3D. I, you know, I have to say I'm kind of impressed. <sighs> like there's a lot going on here, but I'm kind of impressed by the execution here. And you know what? It's, it's not that wild of a shape like this is a playable guitar shape wise it's yeah, not like it's shaped one of these... like a toilet seat which is where what english breakfast steve it's shaped where, like where a, it it's shaped like a plate they british people don't eat off of a toilet seat they put the plate on top of the toilet no seat, i'm steve. saying english breakfast should be thrown in the toilet seat. well it ends up there eventually I've never had English breakfast. Is it, it looks good? awesome to me. Have you ever had it? I have not had it, but every part of it looks amazing to me. Like, who wouldn't want beans for breakfast? Uh, you know, nothing else is going to gas think, you up for the day I like think beans. This is breakfast sausage. Yeah, of course. And this is blood sausage. Yeah. Oh, did we? Okay, you just didn't know what the balls were. No, I don't know. They're testicles. They're those, those are, are testicles. Okay, they're just testicles. Yeah. No, I didn't. I wasn't That's sure. Right. The is British that, eat testicles for breakfast. Is the red slices supposed to be ham, or it kind of looks like slices of beef, honestly? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be ham. I think it's just... It's uh, just really red. Really red. Yeah. That egg looks good. Like, I don't know. I think this is a solid execution. Uh, we don't know the price. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because it's custom made to order, so depending on... <laughs> well, of course it is. It's breakfast. It's, yeah, depending on what items you want on your plate, the cost is going to change. And some people prefer an English muffin, you know? Yeah. Yeah, maybe you don't want mushrooms as knobs. What's, what's on your breakfast guitar? I thought you'd never ask, Steve. <laughs> I prefer a, 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 a sausage. I can't talk. I got so excited I couldn't speak. I prefer a sausage patty. Sausage patty. To a link for breakfast. Okay. Um, 
I would probably go with like hash browns over toast mm -hmm. or like home fries. If I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for a starch, mm -hmm. uh, all the meat, the ham, the blood sausage, I'm just down. I'm just down. I and if I'm getting an egg from a restaurant, I'm going to go scrambled. Really? Yeah. I, I'll fry eggs at home, but it's mostly like a convenience thing because I don't have to dirty up a bowl to scramble it, you know? But I, I prefer scrambled eggs. Oh, I just do the like the shady scramble in the pan. Nah, I don't like that. I just like dump it in there. I'm, bah, 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 bah. I'm weirdly particular about my scrambled eggs. I don't add anything to it. I just go. Bah, 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 bah. And uh, I wouldn't have ketchup on there. I'd have hot sauce yeah. or something, you know, yeah. or fresh jalapenos, Ooh. please. Oh. Yeah. Bacon would be nice too, bacon. like real bacon. None of, this, none of this ham. I mean, ham is great. You know what? I just want a plate full of meat. Just give me all the meats. You what about may, you, Steve? You may have heard me say that I want a lot of bacon. And okay, eggs. All, right, all right. I haven't even seen that show, and I know the quote. <laughs> um, my go-to breakfast. I cook breakfast on days that I don't come down uh, to to the city. You're gonna start referring to San Diego as the city. Mm -hmm even though I'm equal distance between San Diego and Los Angeles. So the city could also be Los Angeles. No, I get it. You're, you're, you're never going to Los Angeles. You're up in the Hills. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. <laughs> um, when you come down to be around a city folk, yeah. a city slickers, uh, hash browns for sure. Yeah. Hash browns. Um, Oh, you know what? What about a biscuits and gravy guitar? Be a lot of white and gray. <laughs> you do brown gravy. Brown? No, uh, you don't do brown gravy with biscuits. You, All right, you. I'm sorry. I interrupted your breakfast guitar. Uh, hash browns for sure. Yeah. I do hash browns. Um, I do uh, one or two eggs, depending. I usually just kind of do it all in the same pan. So I do hash browns and then I push them over to the side and I just drop the eggs in there. So they're like semi fried. Um, and then sometimes I do meat and sometimes I don't. When I do, uh, if I have any kind of like leftover carnitas or whatever, I'll just throw that in there. Mix that all up. You got yourself a soup. And you want to see <laughs> a breakfast. You want to see that all on a, on a guitar? Yeah. All right. Hash browns, uh, two eggs. I'll do two eggs. And uh, just, uh, yeah. That guy that does resin guitars with and things, hot sauce I with use things hot sauce. floating them in them has he done a bacon guitar yet i feel like that's like he hasn't done anything in a while has he he was doing like a video a month has he for done a while. anything that was like cooked food or uh, like perishable but I feel food like, like if you did it if you did a bacon guitar like that like the internet would love it well maybe the internet circa like 2008 yeah i think we are post bacon We're, now are we in a post bacon internet yeah that's that's a sad thought. Well, it's one of those things where I think the bacon has a has a just become part of us now. Yes, it's just like it's standard. Like we know that the bacon is there at yeah. all times. But bacon and, doesn't need the press. I think it would look really cool. And bacon is a sort of thing where because you can cook all the water out of it, and all that's left is the the meat and yeah. the fat. Mm -hmm. I think that would preserve really well in resin. And if you made a block of it of bacon resin. You could cut that down and, and have a really cool looking bacon guitar. How much bait, like how much bacon versus you, would you just like make the entire body? Like it'd be pounds and pounds of bacon. It'd be a lot of bacon. Okay. Yeah. It would be a lot of bacon, Steve. Gotcha. But I'm imagining that they're more kind of like floating in there as cooked, already cooked pieces. Mm -hmm. So there's like a depth to it. So it doesn't have to be like full bacon saturation, you know? Bacon oration. Bacon. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the next thing. We're running late on this All episode. All right. Uh, this episode is brought to you by String Joy. Yes. Crafted it is. in Nashville, Tennessee. Played on stages worldwide. String Joy strings are crafted one at a time by Nashville musicians who know that great art is made with great tools. It's their mission to make strings that inspire you to play more, play better, and play more like you. And Steve didn't just Play read that your off. Way. Steven di didn't just read that off the back of the packaging. He has it memorized. Stringjoy.com. I will say really quick, I just did a video on the new Fender American Vintage 2 Jazzmaster. It's hanging behind my head there. Mm -hmm. It came with nines on it, 
And then before I filmed it, I was like, no, 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 no. This will not do. This is too thin and jangly and stretchy and bendy. And this doesn't feel like a jazz master to me. So I put a set of string joy 11 to 50s on there and it turned it into a jazz master. I was like, finally, this feels like a jazz master. Now I can film it. So thank you, String Joy, for making my jazz master feel like a jazz master. This episode's also brought to you by <laughs> Demonic Machines. You don't have to drop them, but you can if you want. This is the uh, Demonic Machines. How do you pronounce this again? Uh, Alborith? Uh, the Alborogath. Alborogath. Something like that. I don't, I don't, I don't remember the name. It's got a complicated we can't long pronounce name. It, is the but name it's a really of, cool is the name of a demon. And if, and if you say the name correctly, then the demon shows up. And so I very intentionally don't say it oh, correctly. Okay. And I hope you don't Steve, because this demon, when it shows up, it makes you choke on fish bones. But then also the way to make it go away is to like eat fish. Well, yeah, you can eat, eat the rest of the fish and then the bones go away. I mean, it makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, that's, de that's normal demon. What stuff. kind of pedal is this? Ah, oh, it's a dirty, fuzzy, gainy, distortion -y, crazy sort of thing. Go watch my video if you want to find out. Yep, and head on over to demonicmachines.com. You know why? Because tone's not in your fingers. It's, it's in, in the, the signal. signal. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. Because stop joking around. Stop being so silly, guys, with tone in the fingers. Yeah, right. I don't hear anything. You hear anything? Hey, Ryan. You hear anything? Hey, Ryan, what's new? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, I sold the SG. Is that all you got to say about that? I, I, I need to, I need to like fix my stuff with eBay so I can get the money out so that I can donate <laughs> what I said I was going to donate to charity. My money's all hung up in eBay right now. So when that, when I get that out, I'm going to donate. I should just donate it first anyways. I'll get the money out eventually. I, it, I'm kind of sad to see the SG go because it was a... Did you already ship it? I already shipped it. It's gone. Um, it was the guitar goodbye. that I used the most on the early, early version of this channel, the early, early videos. Yeah. But the reality is that I haven't played it regularly in probably four or five years. I just, it's not in regular rotation for me. So I was just like, I need to make a room around here. It's, it's time to start selling sacred cows. So it kind of like broke the seal for me. And there might be more stuff that I'm selling here in the near future. I know I'm listing Ooh. a bunch of pedals. Actually, by the time this airs, hopefully I will have published a bunch of pedals on reverb. I did something fun, Steve. Uh, uh, our, our friend Robert gave me this idea because I was bitching about how I don't have time to do anything and mm -hmm. I have all these pedals I need to sell. He was like, well, have Lauren list them. I was like, that's kind of a wild idea. So I pitched it to Lauren. I was like, hey, do you want to take photos of all these pedals and then list them on reverb for me if I sign you in from your computer? And she's like, can I write my own descriptions and take the photos any way I want? I was like, absolutely. So mm, she okay. wrote she wrote all the descriptions. She has no idea what anything does. She just like looked at it and was like, this is a fun looking pedal. Like, oh, this looks boring. I don't know what this does, but <laughs> I want it out of my house. <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of fun for everyone that probably already saw that go down on the internet, going through all those listings just to read what my wife wrote and look at all the pictures. It's, it's, it's. I'm really excited. There's like 30 pedals that we're listing. Hopefully I have, wow. enough, have enough bags to ship them all. Just uh, just order some more from USPS. I know, but it takes some weeks to get here sometimes. It, last time I requested bags, I got them in like five to seven days. Okay, okay. I'll do it tonight. I'll also, the last time bags. I requested bags for you, they arrived in five to seven days. Yeah, you did it from your office though. You probably have a special office account. No, I did it from my house. What? <sighs> but I had to order the bags... Like before you ordered them, okay, whatever. I don't know, man. Whatever. You have a special magic account, is what I'm saying. Right, do you have anything? Do you have anything new? I don't. I don't. I'm wearing this sick Flatwoods Monster Festival shirt, and so are you. I'm wearing a Flatwoods shirt too. This one's got Japanese written all over it. I love this shirt. That's it. Super cool. That's all I got. Everyone, go visit the Flatwoods Monster Museum if you happen to be where it is. Yep. Where is it? West Virginia. West Virginia. Flatwoods Monster, yeah. West Virginia. Two things it's famous for: Flatwoods Monster. And uh, John Denver, not actually being from there. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next ad was sent by Screen Drag, sent by Nick Smith. Uh, it is a... Oh, um, yeah, this thing. Fender with nylons. This is a new guitar with some Finnish blemishes. Fender player strat with GraphTech acoustophonic saddle pickups slash preamp rear battery access. Smooth fret ends, nut filed to fit nylon strings. 
by purchasing by our grease to my shipping policy, which is free shipping. Now, this is interesting to me, not purely because it is a Stratocaster with nylon strings and no magnetic pickups. It uses a, a piezo mm-hmm. pickup bridge exclusively. There's no knob on it. It's a completely blank pick guard. It's interesting because Fender did make a guitar like this, but I don't, this is a parts build, right? This yeah, is not, this is, a parts build. this is not an official version of this style build. This is a 2021 Fender player Stratocaster. This is like someone building their own Acoustasonic. Kind of. But starting out with a regular Strat and like making modifications to it. But honestly, like it's such a, clean execution that I had to look at photos to figure out if it was right the real deal. But like looking at the wiring and the parts inside and stuff like that is like, that's not Fender that Fender doesn't use parts like that. Like, and when I saw that the Fender version is like an MIJ that, you know, is a Malmsteen guitar yeah. with uh you know, scalp neck from and stuff the, like that from 30 years ago. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Yeah. There's something, there's something off here. So someone tried to reproduce that within, with a made in Mexico. Yeah. Strat. And they honestly, it, it looks great. Looks they got really they clean. Hit the color. This is that, uh, I think the color is technically vintage white. It looks like banana cream pie yellow to yeah, me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's vintage white. All right. Steve says vintage, it's vintage white. Vintage white in certain light. Definitely. Vintage yeah. white in certain light. Definitely looks like banana cream. It does. Yellow. It looks like you know there should be Nilla like, wafers why don't floating you have a on vintage it. white guitar. Right? I don't. I don't know. That's Steve. like an Arctic white, right? Yeah, we're looking at the P4M uh, James Hetfield <laughs> guitar over there. Well, the P4M James Hatfield Hatfeld yeah. the <laughs> with OMG pickups. Right, right. I have plans to maybe do something with you guys can't see it. It's over here. There's plans to do something without eventually, but I don't know when I'll ever have the time to do it. Um, yeah, really clean execution. They want $1,500 for it. That's where this gets like a, a little, mm, but it's you know. also like how much is the actual one? It's gotta be. Yeah, but it's not at the, it's, it's this, you got one already, right? I know. You just have I know. To install the pickup. It's, it's, it's this. Well, this is a player plus, but this is a player. But it's it's basically this. I'm not but with a, modifications. I'm not a player, I just crush a lot. I mean, he's he's basically valuing his work at what, like six hundred dollars on this. Yeah. And I don't. If you paid someone to do that for you, it might end up costing that much. No. I guess it depends on where you go. I think I don't know how much the parts are. So that's, that's a, uh, let's see. Also like you're losing a lot of parts in this transaction. You're getting less parts than the guitar started out with. <laughs> Maybe he'll include the original pit guard and stuff. <laughs> I kind of, I guess it's not really possible with the nylon strings, but I kind of wish it still had the pickups in there. So the ghost guitar kit on Stumac. Uh, oh, that's just the preamp. How much is the full kit? Shopping. Shopping. It looks like the full kit is $75. Um, oh, that's just the preamp. The full kit's $140. All right. So, I mean, I guess. But that's cheaper than a pickup swap, like a regular pickup swap. If you're getting good pickups, it's like, that's a lateral move as far as the value of this goes, because he pulled pickups and switches and pots out of this and put like a whole new system in it. You know, I think the, here's the thing. Like a lot of this work is really clean. Like he used a drill press. We see a photo of the drill press, but like the, the, the back route for the, for the battery cavity and stuff like that. It's really clean work. Like it looks professional. So I don't know. I, Maybe I don't understand the market for this sort of modification. To me, it feels high, but I also feel like twelve hundred would be reasonable. Maybe it is more because it looks like uh, you need it. You this has everything, including the controls, for one forty, 
but then you also have to buy the, the pre-wired bridge. bridge, which is another $116, which that's also why you have the picture of the drill press. That's why, because they're taking right, right. the original fender bridge and they're adding uh, wire holes for the uh, ghost system. Still, like, is, do you think he's making a business out of make doing these, or do you think this is just a one-off? Oh, no, I, I think this is just a one-off. I, th- I think this is a situation where you can't charge for labor. You're just charging for parts. And even that's a little bit, you're, you're, you're buying a, a, a curiosity, right? Like this is, you know, you've got to find the exact right buyer for this because this is not a strat everyone wants. I mean, I love the idea the, the price is the, of hitting the wiggle stick on a nylon guitar. The price but, is up there at 1500. I think, I think if you find the right buyer, excuse me, you're right. 1200. Seems maybe doable, but it's definitely up there. Yeah. You got anything else? No, let's talk about the uh, the next one. Let's talk about Chase Bus Audio. They make this one. The, the Thermae. 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 I think this is my favorite Chase Bliss delay. Yeah. It gives you, at its core, a really solid, totally usable, totally normal sounding delay. Mm-hmm. And then you can just get crazy. With those interval knobs, mm. you can do a fourth, a fifth, an octave, a double octave, a triple quadruple. You know, you can keep going and going octaves up and down two different directions, and you can have each repeat get modified by this interval modification on the Thermae, and it ends up giving you these wild, wonderful, beautiful, sometimes cartoonish, sometimes ethereal sounds. And I think the Thermae is just such an excellent ex- execution of what Chase Bliss pedals can be. So go check that out. Uh, follow Chase Bliss on all their social media so you can stay up on all the wonderful things that they uh, build and sell. We got something else here. It's the Shake. That's right. This is Bigger Pedals. pedal that Bigger Pedals was making for a while. It's not a pedal. It's a shaker. Let's see PRS make one of those. <laughs> you know what? Well, we've, it's like we've, you can't enter, even, we've entered the shaker business. You can't even hear it. You know, like, it's like, if you were blindfolded, you wouldn't even be able to tell it's on right now. Oh, but then you shake it. Now you can tell. It's got a little microphone in there, and it's got the clippings of the ends of all the diodes and resistors in a little yeah. wooden box with a microphone attached to it. You plug this in to your pedal board or your amp. Now you've got an electronic shaker. You can also make all sorts of fun sounds like scraping your pick on the things on the knobs here, clicking it transfers into the microphone you can hit it you can sing into it like it's a microphone you can scrape it's a cool product they don't sell it right now maybe they'll sell it in the future but the fact that bigger pedals makes cool products like this is enough to inspire you to go give them a follow on all their social media and get on email lists and things like that check out the link in the description so huge thanks to all our sponsors this episode for making this program that you enjoy so much possible this last ad was sent by greg Thanks, it's Greg. K Guitar K nine hundred. Oh, this is from Greg Alonzo. Oh. Uh, vintage K Guitar K nine hundred G hollow body model from the nineteen sixties. This is the sort of thing where I look at it. It's it's four hundred dollars. Four hundred. Yeah. It's Ooh. it's got a cool trim on it. It's got that Tysco style trim. Yep. But it's got it's like a long arm version of it. Mm-hmm. It's got those cool old like Gaia Tone, Tysco style pickups. It's got a mute on it. It's got like a take on like a Jazzmaster style bridge on it. It has sliders for the volume and the tone controls. It's got a gold pick guard. It's a cool body shape. It's got two different sets of tuning keys on it. I <laughs> wish, every part of my body wishes that this was a guitar that was worth playing. <laughs> But I know in my heart that you don't think it is probably you think not. It sucks. I think it probably you sucks think it's to play. Trash. I don't think it's trash. I think it's total garbage. Like if I had this in my possession, I would keep it just to look at it, and I'd play it from time to time. But it would be very far away. I just have a deep, deep suspicion that it's very far away from being a gig ready guitar. Like there's people who take things like this and they refret them and they delaminate the neck and put a modern truss rod in them and things like that. And they make them playable in a modern way. 
oh, man, if if that could happen with this guitar, then I I'm I'm into it. It breaks my heart when I look at these cool old funky import guitars, and it's like if I just it, I just know it's not going to be. If this is local to you, um, it's got zero fret. This is local to you. It's what's, got a fake Gibson what's the price got to be for you to go check it out and find out if it's really that bad? If it was good, like if I knew that it was good, four hundred dollars, I'd be driving to go get it right but now. But you don't. That's what I'm saying. I so don't think it's good. You don't think it's good, so you're not going to. I've tried so many guitars from this era that with this style of build and these style of parts that I know now that to be like under $150. You're saying Mm. at what point at At $150, I'd I'd probably like, I got to go check this thing. That's what I'm saying. At what what price do you say? Well, if the guitar sucks, I could parts harvest or if the guitar sucks, it'll just be like a wall hanger. I could definitely parts harvest that trim and put it on my guild surf line. People would be so mad. Why? Parts harvesting vintage guitars. No, just put a different trapeze tailpiece on there. Dare you stir. I could put it back later. <laughs> I love the little floral flourish on the pickguard. That's, that's really fun. Yeah. I love that it's like there was this era of import guitars and sixties guitars that were that had the truss adjustment at the at the heel like Almost like shredder style, where you could stick an Allen it's, key in there. It's funny because now, yeah. like that's like the it's a signature that's high, a s- high end, high guitar, performance, like high performance thing. Yeah, and for them, it was just like, oh, let's put the bolt down here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, tell us about the song and let's get out of here. Would you guys pay four hundred for that? Would you drive across town to go check it out? I mean, it looks rad, right? No, it looks super cool. Yeah. And I know that there's, you know, companies like Pure Salem and, and Eastwood and stuff that kind of revitalize these sorts I, of I looks. I think one of the things that, like, kind of keeps the price down on this is the fact that they're saying it's a K, the K900G uh, or whatever, but there's no actual badges anywhere on the yeah. guitar. Yeah. I also think it's really wild. First of all, the switch hardware looks unique. Like, that ball-in switch there is really cool. Mm-hmm. It goes from solo to bass and then rhythm. Like how does that switch work? Work wouldn't know. wouldn't rhythm normally be the middle so, s- section, and then bass would be the neck? Like if you're thinking about like yeah, what frequencies yeah. you get, but then like on a Les Paul, it's either rhythm or lead, right? I, uh, I think oh, it's treble, treble and I think treble it's only and treble and rhythm or something. I can't remember yeah. now, but I. Th- you know, it's it's funky, and the sliders and the switches say Mike One and Mike Two. <laughs> oh, that, I didn't notice that. There's a lot of funky little details to things like this that uh, I I wish I could know that it was a worthwhile guitar to own. You know. All right, tell us about the song, Steve. We've done this show long enough. It's a rhythm in trouble. Rhythm and Trouble. That's it. Uh, this was sent by Nelson. He says, hey, guys, I record some stuff from my bedroom when I have the time. And I listen to your podcast and your demos, and I like your content. Thank you. So if you could play my song in one of your podcasts, it would be really cool. Thanks. The artist's name is Kundal one in one Song name is Infinity Plaza. And this is a song sent to us from Panama. Panama. Panama.
on the delay repeats there. Dun, 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 yeah. dun. That's I like that song. Ending. Yeah, that was great. All right, guys. Bye. Stay grounded. <laughs>